New chemistry 4 and 6 indicate that the stone named Hypatia from the Egyptian desert could be the first tangible evidence found on Earth of a supernova type 1A explosion. These rare supernovas are some of the most energetic events in the universe. This is the conclusion from a new study published in the journal Icarus by researchers of the University of Johannesburg and others. There is a general view that the dust that formed the solar nebula and afterwards the solar system was homogeneous and well mixed. Now we have here Hypatia, which is a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, we see uh, particles in it that have not been seen elsewhere in the solar system. Rather than looking at all the anomalies that this thing presents, we have been wanting to explore if there is an underlying unity, if there is some kind of a consistent uh, chemical pattern in this stone. And we did find it using the proton microprobe in Somerset West. It is a consistent pattern of trace elements, but very, very different from anything in the solar system, very different from carbonaceous chondrites, ordinary chondrites, etc. We cannot compare it with anything in the solar system. We have been looking at uh, the average composition of dust in, uh, let's say, our arm of the uh, galaxy, that is the solar neighborhood, as it is called. Uh, there is no similarity, no full similarity there either. This is Hypatia's pattern is different. The only thing that we found that is similar to the pattern of Hypatia, and it's no perfect match, but it's the only thing that is similar, that is the material that is uh, spewed out into interstellar space by one particular kind of supernova 1A ex explosion. And um, uh, whether that is the ultimate answer or not, what it does show is that individual parcels of dust uh, can actually be incorporated in the solar nebula as it formed without being fully mixed and homogenized with the rest. Since 2013, the researchers have discovered a series of highly unusual chemistry clues in a small fragment of the Hypatia stone. In the new research, they eliminate cosmic suspects for the origin of the stone in a painstaking process, they have pieced together a timeline stretching back to the early stages of the formation of the Earth, our Sun and the other planets in our solar system. Their hypothesis about Hypatia's origin starts with a star. A red giant star collapsed into a white dwarf star. The collapse would have happened inside a gigantic dust cloud also called a nebula. That white dwarf found itself in a binary system with a second star. The white dwarf star eventually ate the other star. At some point, the hungry white dwarf exploded as a supernova type 1A inside the dust cloud. After cooling, the gas atoms which remained of the supernova 1A started sticking to the particles of the dust cloud. A huge bubble of this supernova dust and gas atoms mix never interacted with other dust clouds. Millions of years would pass and eventually the bubble would slowly become solid in a cosmic dust bunny kind of way. Hypatia's parent body would become a solid rock sometime in the early stages of formation of our solar system. This process probably happened in a cold, uneventful outer part of our solar system in the wood cloud or in the Kuiper belt. At some point, Hypatia's parent rock started hurtling towards Earth. The heat of energy into Earth's atmosphere, combined with the pressure of impact in the Great Sand Sea in southwestern Egypt, created micro diamonds and shattered the parent rock. The Hypatia stone picked up in the desert must be one of many fragments of the original impactor. The researcher says that if this hypothesis is correct, the Hypatia stone would be the first tangible evidence on Earth of a supernova type 1A explosion. Perhaps equally important, it shows that an individual anomalous parcel of dust from outer space could actually be incorporated in the solar nebula that our solar system was formed from without being fully mixed in. This goes against the conventional view that dust which our solar system was formed from was thoroughly mixed. 
to piece together the timeline of how hypatia may have formed the researchers used several techniques to analyze the stain stone in the year 2013 a study of the organ isotopes showed the rock was not formed on earth it had to be extraterrestrial 2015 study of noble gases in the fragment indicated that it may not be from any known type of meteorite or comet in 2018 the uj team published various analyses which included the discovery of a mineral nickel phosphide not previously found in any object in our solar system at that stage hypatia was proving difficult to analyze further the trace metals the researchers were looking for couldn't really be seen in detail with the equipment they had they needed a more powerful instrument that would not destroy the tiny sample rather than exploring all the incredible anomalies hypatia presents the researchers wanted to explore if there is an underlying unity they wanted to see if there is some kind of consistent chemical pattern in the stone they carefully selected 17 targets on the tiny sample for analysis all were chosen to be well away from the earthly minerals that had formed in the cracks of the original rock after its impact in the desert the researchers identified 15 different elements in hypatia with much greater precision and accuracy with a proton micro probe The first big new clue from the proton beam analysis was the surprisingly low level of silicon in the Hypatia stone targets. The silicon along with chromium and manganese were less than 1% to be expected for something formed within our inner solar system. Further, high iron, high sulfur, high phosphorus, high copper and high vanadium were conspicuous and anomalous. The researchers found a consistent pattern of the trace element abundances that is completely different from anything in the solar system primitive or evolved objects in the asteroid belt and the meteors don't match this either so next they looked outside the solar system then they compared the hypatia element concentration pattern with what one would expect to see in the dust between stars in our solar arm of milky way galaxy again there was no similarity at all At this point the proton beam data had also ruled out four suspects of where hypatia could have formed. Hypatia did not form on earth, was not part of any known type of comet or meteorite, did not form from average inner solar system dust and not from average interstellar dust either. The next simplest possible explanation for the element concentration pattern in hypatia would be a red giant star. Red giant stars are common in the universe but the proton beam data ruled out mass outflow from a red giant star too. Hypatia had too much iron, too little silicon and too low concentrations of heavy elements heavier than iron. The next suspect to consider was a supernova type 2. Supernovas of type 2 cook up a lot of iron. They are also a relatively common type of supernova. Again the proton beam data for Hypatia ruled out a promising suspect with chemistry forensics a supernova type 2 was highly unlikely as the source of strange minerals like nickel phosphide in the pebble there was also too much iron in hypatia compared to silicon and calcium it was time to closely examine the predicted chemistry of one of the most dramatic explosions in the universe a rarer kind of supernova also makes a lot of iron supernovas of the type 1a only happen once or twice per galaxy per century but they manufacture most of the iron in the universe most of the steel on earth was once the element iron created by 1a supernovas also established science says that some 1a supernovas leave very distinctive forensic chemistry clues behind this is because of the way some 1a supernovas are set up first a red giant star at the end of its life collapses into a very dense white dwarf star white dwarf stars are usually incredibly stable for very long periods and most unlikely to explode however there are exceptions to this a white dwarf star could start pulling matter of another star in a binary system one can say the white dwarf star eats up its companion star eventually the white dwarf gets so heavy hot and unstable it explodes in a supernova 1a the nuclear fusion during the supernova 1a explosion should create highly unusual element concentration patterns accepted scientific theoretical models predict 
Also, the white dwarf star that explodes in a supernova one year is not just blown to bits, but literally blown to atoms. The supernova one year matter is delivered into space as gas atoms. In an extensive literature search of star data and model results, the team could not identify any similar or better chemical fit for the Hypatia stone than a specific set of supernova 1A models. All supernova 1A data and theoretical models show much higher proportions of iron compared to silicon and calcium than supernova 2 models. In this respect, the proton beam laboratory data on Hypatia fit to supernova 1A data and models. Altogether, 8 of the 15 elements analyzed uh, conform to the predicted ranges of proportions related to ion. Those are the elements silicon, sulfur, calcium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, ion, and nickel. Not all 15 of the analyzed elements in Hypatia fit the predictions though. In 6 of the 15 elements, proportions were between 10 and 100 times higher than the ranges predicted by theoretical models for supernovas of type 1A. These are the elements aluminium, phosphorus, chlorine, potassium, copper and zinc. Since a white dwarf star is formed from a dying red giant, Hypatia could have inherited these element proportions for the six elements from a red giant star. This phenomenon has been observed in white dwarf stars in other research, says the researcher. If this hypothesis is correct, the Hypatia stone would be the first tangible evidence on Earth of a supernova type 1A explosion, one of the most energetic events in the universe. The Hypatia stone would be a clue of a cosmic story started during the early formation of our solar system and be found many years later in a remote desert strewn with other pebbles.